Okay, so this is the Rubik's 360. This is my solution. I noticed on the web that there really isn't much of a solution at the moment, so um, here we go. Now, I've got it in the solve position at the moment, just so that you can see how everything behaves. Now, the real clue on how to solve this is actually contained on the instructions. It pays to read the instructions. You have to find where the axes of these spheres are. We've got three spheres, well only two real important spheres. You've got the outer sphere of course, but the two important spheres are your inner sphere, your middle sphere, we can see right there in the middle, and the inner sphere where all the balls will be contained in their starting position. Now, the, out, uh, the middle sphere rotates about this axis here, okay, marked by these two black knobs. Now, the two black knobs, all they do is they control these locking mechanisms. Don't be confused by them. They just simply let the balls out of their little capsules or holds them in. At the moment, I've got them holding the balls in their respective positions. Now, each of those inner spheres, the middle sphere and the inner sphere, has its own independent weight. You can see them down there at the bottom, those little ball bearings. Now they tend to obviously weigh it down and fall to the bottom. Directly opposite those weights are the holes through which you hope to release the balls. Now the middle sphere has got two holes. If we look down, it's very obvious. The middle sphere has got two holes, there they are. And the inner sphere has got one hole. Let's just wiggle it. There you go, there's the one hole from the inner sphere. Oh, before we go any further, let's have a look at the colours of the balls. Now they're actually arranged in a logical order. You've got your red, orange and yellow. It's easy to remember because red and yellow together combines to create orange. On the other side we've got blue, white and green. Now that's important, there are actually two bands of colours. You can actually solve each band independently and that's what we're going to do. Okay, the action to solve it. We start in this position with the two black knobs parallel with the ground. We check, jiggle it, make sure that the two weights, the two ball bearings are at the bottom, which they are. And what we're going to do is we rotate the entire thing end over end about its axes like that carrying the weight of the middle ball, middle sphere up and over. It collects the hole from the inner sphere and takes it down to the bottom. So if we have a look at it, I'll just have a look down on it there, you'll see that the hole from the inner sphere has been captured and taken down to the bottom. It's actually not captured, it's just uh, friction that does the trick. If we hold it too long, of course, it flicks back and out of place. But that's the action. So let's release all our balls. Here we go. In they go. Oops, there's another one. A lot of fun releasing them. In they go. Alright. There we go. There's our starting position. All the balls in the bottom. Now you choose which side you want to solve first. In this case, I'm going to solve blue, green, white. I don't know why, psychologically, it just seems to work better for me. Anyway, we start off with uh, that side facing you. Once again, that action with those two knobs parallel to the ground. Make sure that the weights are at the bottom. And off we go. We start rotating. You can see that that weight has been carried up. There's the hole from the inner sphere. Down it goes. There we go. We've got the hole down there in the inner sphere. Now in this case, I've got the white ball very close to the hole, so let me just let that drop in. Now the next action is we want to flick, we want to hold it at about 30 degrees like that, so that we keep that hole down at the bottom. Now I'm going to flick it towards me, the entire sphere towards me, and then straighten it up so that that white ball will drop into this hole just here. So here we go. Up it goes. Do you see that? It's dropped into that that um, this lower hole. Now we're now we're in the sweep position. 
We can see now with that ball captured, we can manipulate that ball and just take it wherever we want, right around there. See, we're rotating about the axes of that middle sphere, and that middle sphere is just going to, if we keep it tilted at that angle, that sphere is going to go around to wherever we want it to go. Now, I find it works better rotating it. I guess that's, what's that, anti-clockwise. We find the, the hole that it has to go in, and we just gently lift it up, let it drop into place. There we go. So once you've done one, you can, of course, do them all using exactly the same action. Um, once you've got it in that hole, of course, you lock it in place with the little locking mechanism. You can also use that locking mechanism to sort of guide the ball into its place, if you wish. Um, see, uh, whoop, one second, get him back out, get him back out. So he's in the middle sphere at the moment, and, uh, oh, I'm having trouble trying to get him in. So uh, you can sort of flick it down move your guide across and just sort of um, guide it into the hot into the little capsule hole okay um, so now it's just a matter of getting the rest of the balls now I'm doing the I've got blue and green left on this particular ring to finish so rotate it around again slow uh, continuous motion capture that in a hole and we go now in this case you see that uh, the blue ball or the green ball isn't actually closest to the hole so you just give it a little swirl like this swirl it around as if it was a good wine and um, hopefully you can get it so it just drops in Pop. there we go we got the blue one in uh, once again we do our tilting action tilt it up and one, one motion tilt it up and capture that ball in that bottom hole but don't worry if you miss it you just have another crack at it rotate it around find the hole you're looking for and plop it in you don't have to be particularly quick and it goes we've got two let's do it again round we go greens in a good position this time flick it in whoa missed let's do it again sorry Green is not in a good position this time, uh, but he's going to go in. And uh, flick. Not so easy to do with a camera in your eye, but nonetheless, cross it goes and lock it in position. There we go. Okay, flick it around. Let's do the other side. Easier to do now. We know any of those balls will actually do for our solution. Rotate it around, end on end. Oops, 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 let's try it again. If that happens, straight, uh, let them all settle, start again. Rotate around. Just keep that ball opposite, lock it into place, and whoop. There's the red one. Take him around. And drop him in. Oops. Drop him in. Okay, one more time. Oh, let's lock those in place. Around we go. There's the hole. Grab it. And flick it around. Whoop. There's the orange one. Oh, we're pretty close to the orange one. Sorry, sorry, it's hard to do keeping it in the camera. I'm sorry. One last one. Round it goes. Oh, it's a bit premature. Now, uh, sorry, that last one I did um, um, a little bit freehand, but uh, once you get good at this, you can sort of improvise a little bit when you see the ball going in the wrong direction you can rotate it around and there you go there's the solution it's lots of fun it's quite cathartic actually doing it so uh, enjoy